Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I, um, I would like to, uh, to start with, um, with maybe uh, introducing not only myself, but, uh, but Denmark. Denmark is a, a relatively small nation. Uh, you wouldn't probably have heard that much about our nation if it wasn't because of design. Design is to, to Danish what uh, pasta is to the Italians. We simply consume it every day. We are born and raised with it. Uh, we meet it all the way from, from kinder, kindergarten, all the way through uh, elderly homes, even to the fact that our churches are thought of in a way whereby design plays an important role. So design to Danes are an extremely important part of our life. And that is... Uh, the, uh, the pure explanation for all these great companies that, uh, that you will meet, not only today, but in the, in the days to come. One of them is, uh, is Fritzensen. Fritzensen is a, a relatively old company, 140 years old, with a, uh, with a vast tradition of crafting timeless design. And to us, it all started in uh, 1872, in the middle of Copenhagen, uh, on a small premises where we had to move from. And since then, the story is long and exciting. Crafting is one of three words that very easily can describe what Fritzensen does. Crafting means that the the uh, handcraft chip is a very, very important ingredient in our manufacturing processes, in what we do, what we breathe. And crafting is always an intelligent part of how we think our designs. So there's already there a link between the manufacturing, manufacturing processes, and how we think and develop design. Timeless is equally important for us. It's a feature that, that goes in two different directions. We think of timeless as, as being products that last for a long time. It's very, very important for us that our products are able to last for a long time. But it's also a matter of becoming timeless instead of being in time and out of time that's equally important for us in our design processes. And finally, design in itself. As I just introduced you to Denmark, Danish design is something that you breathe. It's a piece of art that, uh, that we all cherish very much in different directions, in different uh, perspectives. But in general, design is very important to us as a nation. And we regard ourselves in Fritensen as a, maybe as a small herd of monks that is actually traveling the world, if not barefooted, at least uh, walking and paving our way through telling the gospel of what Danish design is all about. Simplicity, understated, well orchestrated, high quality, those are <coughs> the parameters that, uh, that you will see, not only from uh, my company, from, from many other of the Danish design companies that you will meet these days. A little bit of history on Fritz Hansen uh, and figures. Uh, approximately uh, 120 million US dollars in sales. 85% uh, is for exports. The uh, majority of exports is for all the European countries. Uh, approximately 15% of sales is in Far East Asia. Uh, by far the biggest portion of it in, uh, in Japan, which has been a very good market for Fritensen in many years. Uh, approximately 1,000 retailers around the world and a few mono brand stores. So let me describe to you a bit more about our design philosophy. Because 
when I was asked to do a presentation on the brand of retention, you really have to start with the beginning. And the beginning is the design philosophy. Our brand is not an artificial brand built on, on a few values. It's simply built on our design value. So let me describe to you what the ingredients is in our design philosophy. There are three major ingredients. The first one being what we describe as the emotional part. Emotional in as when you sit in furniture, as when you feel the furniture, when you can actually see the, the hand-sewn leather, uh, then you can have the emotional feeling of, of reminding yourself of what kind of a product this is. And to us, there is actually three parts or three words that, that gives meaning to what we mean when we say there is an emotional part to our products. It has something to do with finding the genuine Danish style. It has something to do with, with the slick, serene uh, lines that, that Danish design is built on. And finally, that there is a, a feeling of something that is Danish. And what is Danish probably has a lot to do with uh, handcraftsmanship. <coughs> Secondly, there's also a rational way of thinking of our designs. And uh, here are a few words that, that gives the rational part of our design philosophy a direction. One is obviously that uh, that is impeccable quality. For us, quality is not something that can be discussed. Our furniture has a 20-year warranty, and our furniture needs probably, after 20 years or maybe 25 years, small repairs in, in the leather or, for that matter, in the woodworks. But in my mind, this is only basically the, uh, the necessity of a product made by Danes carrying the Danish design tradition with it. Quality is not a, on for discussion. It should be refined, as in the understated, minimalistic, and functionalistic uh, appearance of the product. And finally, uh, a very important feature for us is that Timeless means long-lasting, but it also means that the materials should actually age with beauty. There's actually a feature that, that not that many companies are realizing is important, but the importance is that if you choose to, to buy a leather egg chair from Pretensen, and after 10 years or 15 years of usage, you know, to you, it should look even more nice and familiar to you as a family or as an individual than the day you bought it. While the majority of products that you'll buy these days have it vice versa, that after three months or after two years, it's torn up and you throw it away. In our case, you will build your life into your product instead of throwing it away after a few years. And these are, do remember, features that obviously we uh, internally in Pretensen will hold us up against when we design new products, that it should be living up to standards as aging with beauty. And finally, the visual result. Again, equally important to make sure that you have a whole Scandinavian design. And the visual design should be original, pure, and again, long-lasting. Long-lasting in the sense that uh, just as the fine lady, uh, Miss Chanel, once said very wisely, you know, if you're in fashion today, you're out of fashion tomorrow. 
And in our beliefs in Fritz Hansen, we don't believe in fashion. We, leave, we believe in long lasting. So to us, it's much more a matter of how can our furniture fit into architecture, which both can be of yesterday's nature as well as in future architecture. So these nine elements are the ones that are simply not only building our brand, but characterizing our brand. And obviously, as you combine these, somewhere in the middle here, there is a common denominator defining the uh, Fritz Hansen DNA, the one that, uh, that is so difficult to express with words that you can only see and feel and, and hopefully see for many years. To create new designs is, in my mind, a very, very delicate and, and difficult process. Not only because of you need to take care of, of all these nine values and, and try to make sure that you find something that you feel is interesting, but secondly, you need to combine it with different types of designers. So within Fritz Hansen, the design process and the, uh, the capabilities of being able to work together with different designers from different parts of the world is a very, very important part of, of our business philosophy. Uh, they need to be tested out. We will not choose a designer just because of his merits. We will actually work with him or her for a number of what we call open labs, uh, which are basically shorter, uh, time, uh, 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 shorter design ideas that we will test out together with designers, either in small groups or individually. And we will, we will ab afterwards evaluate not only based on the design, but also the capabilities of Fritz Hansen and that specific designer, how we are able to work together. How much do we understand each other? How do we relate to each other? Is it a complicated working process, or is it a, a nice and flowing process? It's a bit like dating, you know. By the end of the day, you need to make sure that you not only find the right girlfriend, but uh, probably to be your wife one day soon. But the, uh, the necessity of testing each other out is extremely important during the process of defining who would be the next designer for Fritz Hansen. And obviously, uh, putting all this into context in a, in a branding perspective, you would obviously see that a lot of the processes that, that Fritz Hansen is, is using for manufacturing purposes is strictly handmade. There is, there is not a lot of our furnitures who are made by robotics or, for that matter, in a highly degree of automation. Most of it is exactly what this is, crafting, timeless design. It's handmade, and therefore, it's an extremely complicated process. And let me give you uh, just a few examples on on uh, Fritz Hansen products, where they are used and placed. And as you can see, you know, to us, it is the combination of the architecture, the bare feeling of, of which kind of materials are being used, and thereby defining a room that has an influence on whether Fritz Hansen can play a role or not. All this put into a context of what we believe is aesthetic designs. We believe that aesthetic design can make people stop and think. It can even make them smile. We believe that aesthetics is not merely intellectual, 
It's emotional, like love. Aesthetics is defined through your eyes, your palms, your stomach, and occasionally the tiny hairs on your neck. We believe it's possible to create something beautiful without compromising comfort and impeccable quality. And that simplicity, along with perfectionism, craftsmanship, and attention to detail, is the heart of long-lasting design. We believe that it takes an original to make an original. And we believe that one piece of furniture is sometimes all it takes to beautify an entire room or building. Not to mention the minds of the people who live and work there. We believe in the touch of Nordic aesthetics. So the, the basic, in terms of, of our brand and building the brand, is the fact that we are trying to touch upon what we believe is Nordic aesthetics. And this goes obviously into many different types of, of communication. Uh, one part is obviously simple, above the line communication, as in ads uh, and so forth. In, in my mind, that's not really interesting these days. I think the, uh, the issue of, uh, of uh, branding yourself in a retail environment is by far more interesting. Relating a bit to what uh, you, Anthony, said earlier on, I think that creating uh, the ambience, uh, the state of mind, both emotionally uh, as well as physically, in, uh, in a furniture shop or in a lifestyle shop somewhere makes much more sense than, pardon my French, stupid ads in, uh, in magazines. In my mind, uh, the real battle in the years to come will be in the store, trying to convince people that what they see and what they feel can belong to them at a, hopefully, very soon stage. And finally, equally important, to at a much larger degree than, than, than many of us do probably, work with events and co-operations between different types of, of relevant design companies, or for that matter, the entire uh, art industry. In my mind, I think that uh, some of the the ideas that can be found in the twilight zone between the performing arts as, as well as in the design segment is really benefiting from both. And, and we see a lot of these uh, in the past years where we have worked together with uh, a lot of different artists. Finally, a few comments uh, on, uh, on Far East Asia. Uh, and uh, the vast market out here, uh, seen from a European point of view. In my mind, uh, the big obstacle for us as Europeans is basically that our home market are not growing to the extent that, uh, that we would like to see. So we obviously look overseas, we look to the Americas, and we look to Far East Asia to uh, see new market opportunities. And in the case of Fritzensen, uh, having a strong base in, in Japan um, makes it relatively easy for us at least to consider some of the other Far East Asian markets. And in my mind, uh, we are seeing a tendency towards that the Korean market is developing very fast and quickly these days. I think that the, the very, very big um, Korean companies like Samsung and others have shown that design can make a difference in positioning of, of, uh, of a lot of products, utilities. Uh, secondly, I think that the uh, Hong Kong market and the Singapore markets are obviously important
for companies like Fritzensen to penetrate to a higher degree. And then obviously the, uh, the, big, the big question mark is mainland China. Where, where should we be? Where shouldn't we be? Uh, and these days, a lot of, of business people in Europe are provoking themselves to, to actually enter the, the big Chinese market because they feel that it's necessary for them. And uh, in my mind, uh, you shouldn't go to mainland China if you don't see the market opportunities. And then you're probably better off waiting a while. Uh, in the case of Fritzensen, uh, we see opportunities in the, uh, in the Chinese market, mainly in Shanghai and in Beijing. But uh, the real scary thing is obviously uh, the, the daily uh, communication that we receive uh, on the number of copies that is on the marketplace. And uh, this is a, a big threat, not only to, to mid-sized companies uh, in the design world as, as Fritz Hansen, but it's a complete threat to, to the trust between the EU on one hand side and the big, big Chinese market on the other hand side. Uh, and where it's very, very importantly that, that soon there will be not only regulations in place, but there's also an execution in place that makes sure that we can protect our own rights in these parts of the world as well. Um, I, am, uh, I am positive and I, I hope that this will happen sooner than later, but obviously uh, um, it's a big, big, big critical issue for companies like us. So all in all, I think that uh, I will end with one final picture, which is, um, it's not there, it should be. There it is. This probably reminds you of something. It's a chair made by a Danish architect and designer in 1949. We call it the China chair. It's obviously heavily inspired by a original uh, Chinese empress chair. But see, the difference is, and this is my point relating to copying, this is not a copy. This is something that is inspired by an original and gave in this case, uh, Hans Wegner, the opportunity to make his own interpretation in a Danish interpretation of an old empress chair from China. And let me you know, end here by saying I wish that more designers in China, maybe also in Hong Kong, would use this kind of technology and this kind of notion instead of copying others Thank you very much.